This topic we're going to be looking at extruding and insetting faces. This is something again we'll be using a lot so it's going to be useful to know the kind of nuances with them and the best ways to use them and how to access. So as always we're going to start with a simple cube so shift a mesh cube and we have our cube ready to be affected. Now this we do need to go into edit mode for so we're going to go straight to edit mode and again I'm going to cover the options in both ways. So we have our extrude option over here and now the way that the extrude works we're going to want to grab maybe just a single face for this and if we press extrude we're going to get this option here to pull this up and move things around. Now the this is the first operation which has this tiny arrow you can see at the bottom right of the icon, which means that if you hold this and drag, you get slightly different options for the way that we're using the extrude tool. So by default, we're set to extrude the region, which is uh, just going to extrude along the axis that we're dragging. We have things like we can extrude along normals, which is very handy if you wanted to create a shape, which is bigger just along these the faces while staying joined. And all I'm doing here is similar to the bevel where we're clicking and dragging to activate the operation. Similarly, we have this option here for extruding individuals. So we can go along the operation if you wanted to make something, for instance, where you have this kind of shape that would be very easy to make with a simple extrude operation just by selecting all of the faces and pulling those out. But I'm going to stick to the region option. And of course, the other option to do this we have is our shortcut key. So if we go back to box select and just press E when we have a face selected, we get our same extrude option here. So again, like with the bevel, when you use the shortcut, don't need to click the operations immediately applied. So you can just drag to get the edits that you want. Now, one thing when you're using extrude is because you get this automatic movement if you're using the shortcut, again, it's very handy to remember that you can right click to cancel that movement and it will just set everything back to where the, uh, the faces were. And this is really useful if you want to do something like create a new set of faces or geometry in the middle of a face to extrude along later. So if we press E, right click and then S and then drag, this is what I mean is that we can create some faces in the middle here. Uh, this then allows us to press E again and we can extrude and we can just do this very quickly to create something like a square dumbbell, uh, something silly like this. And this is again, going to be the foundation of creating a lot of the very generic and standard assets you see uh, like a stone pedestal or something would just be a set of extrusions. So you're going to press S and E to get these in, uh, maybe drag this up a little bit and then drag it in a second time. So you've got our base, drag that in and you've got some immediately weird looking stone obelisk type thing. So like I said, in the first video, these very few operations that we've looked at can very quickly create the standard kind of silhouettes of geometry that you see in standard props. The other thing I mentioned we're going to be looking at is our inset tool. And that's because extrusions and insets kind of go hand in hand with each other. The inset can kind of replace and speed up the extrusion in certain situations. Whereas adding the new face was a three step thing with extrusions, like I said, to get the new face in the middle, we press E, S, and then drag. That's just two steps with the inset. So if we press I instead of E, when we have this face selected and just drag in, we get the same thing, but because the uh, inset faces isn't expecting to move any geometry around, you, you skip the bit where you have to uh, specify that you're scaling. And then once we've inset, we can just press E again, and we're kind of back to the same workflow as we had previously. Now, the one thing to mention is it's useful to know both of these because inset's great for adding faces on the inside, but it doesn't let you scale back outwards. So at least not very easily, and it will make some mess like this if you try it. So this is one of those things where you just start to learn which is going to be better for which. So this is going to be much better as an extrusion. We can press E and S to scale this back out and we get a much nicer set of geometry this way. So inset's great for adding things in the middle of a, of a face or information like that. And again, when you're using either the extrude or the insets, you have the same options as we mentioned in the bevel and the other operations down here. So if you wanted to set some specific values, this is going to be handy if you're creating something which needs some symmetry, then you can get a rough idea of where you want this to be. Okay, so that is the basics of extruding and insetting faces. We'll build upon this a lot more in the future videos. I just wanted to at least have everyone with a base understanding of how they're used, where to find them, uh, and the kind of uses that they have. So I'll leave this video here. And as always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. 
And of course, do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.